Dallas Cowboys at the Philadelphia Eagles. That's your main 425 game. This is one of those weeks where the NFL has just three games in the 4 o'clock window. The other two are less than stellar so that people can watch Cowboys-Eagles. Uh, your game of the week, Eagles favored by three. Eagles are atop all your power rankings because they're the only team with only one loss. They're seven and one. What are you looking for? Certainly atop the Mike Florio power rankings. Oh, absolutely. Were you, what are you looking for? AKA how does he? How does he separate? Standings. How does he separate the six and two teams? I just does think. He, I is feel it like, recency bias? Do you think the Chiefs dropped a lot because we just saw them lose? I feel like those are just random, right? It's like as long as he's separating the games one. Then who, yeah. the order within the tier of win of X wins is Doesn't just really matter. Just, yeah. yeah, it's the same. It's just, just sort random. by winning percentage, and we're all winners here. Maybe. Um, what was the question? The football game between the Cowboys and the Eagles. Ah, yes. Anything in particular about it? Just speak. I always say, Sam, what are you looking for? In this yeah, morning? I see. That's I got it. some fun stats. If you want me to start with that, sure. Let's see what I you was, got. I was looking up some stuff on the Cowboys defense, right? Yep. Um, so on passes up to ten yards. Mm -hmm. No, the Cowboys, you know, they had pick six last week on Stafford, pick six on Mac Jones, uh, Daniel Jones. I think those were all up to 10 yards. The Cowboys are allowing an EPA per play of minus 0.47. So from for perspective here, that's on passes up to 10 yards. So teams are losing half a point every single time they throw just a simple up to 10-yard pass, one to, one to nine-yard pass against the Cowboys, in part because of those pick sixes. Only one other team in the NFL has a negative EPA per play allowed on those passes, right? They're usually positive plays for the offense. You dink and dunk and you move the ball and you – in the Cowboys, it's like disaster. And, of course, that's skewed by the interceptions and everything. But even just the, the short game against Dallas, under 50% completions on passes up to 20 yards, their defense has been just fantastic, not only getting pressure up front but um, preventing just easy catches for opposing offenses, which I think puts the onus on Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith to make plays down the field. You want to hit some of the short, the short stuff too, but the Eagles' downfield passing game, which has been very good over the last few weeks, is going to be front and center against this Cowboys defense. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, the Dallas defense still has the best pressure rate in the NFL. I think you could argue reasonably that they have the best pass rush in the NFL across the board. And Philadelphia, who we tend to associate as being in that category as well, you know, they run seven deep, they can get pressure everywhere, kind of haven't been this year. Like, they are below average in pressure rates. And as much as Jalen Carter has been incredible for them on the defensive line, the, the rookie defensive tackle, they haven't been getting the same standard of pass rush as they have in previous seasons. Like, Hassan Reddick has not... I know he has seven sacks, so it looks good, but he has 28 pressures and a pass rushing grade of 70. That's, you know, way down on what he had previously done. They are not quite as devastating as they had been in the past. Yes, and I think we saw – I'm trying not to overreact to last week, but let's let's. what have we seen the last two weeks from the Philadelphia Eagles? On Sunday Night Football, they played a great game two weeks ago against the Miami Dolphins, a Dolphins offense that we just talked up a couple minutes ago. Obviously, they're the best offense in the league. And the Eagles shut them down, big red zone interception, the whole deal. And then last week, for the second time this year, Sam Howell and Washington absolutely tore them apart. And they, and they didn't sack Sam Howell. One sack right? of Sam Howell. Yeah, that's one of those like on-paper deals. Like you, you should start with, we're going to get five or six sacks. Right. Let's just not give up 350 through the air on those other plays. But Washington moved the ball pretty easily against Philadelphia. And they certainly have those games when the front four is not getting home. And I think you highlighted that. They have the name value. They're really not winning as much up front. And they're going up against a good Dallas offensive line. And when da Dak, this matchup, I think, fits better against Dallas than, say, the 49ers. Dak has had success against the Eagles in the past. And when you play zone coverage, Dak's pretty good at getting the ball to where he needs to and finding the open man. He played a really great game last week in their demolishing of the Rams. I kind of like the matchup for the Cowboys. Um, in, in, you know, the, the high-level view on this, too, is – Cowboys have to prove that they can beat good teams, right? We've talked about that a lot this year. They got smoked by the 49ers. So is that just a bad matchup against San Francisco? Or is it Dallas really can't play with these top-tier teams, with you know the Niners, the Eagles, the teams that you expect to be 
competing for the NFC Championship at the end of the year. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued actually by that sort of trench battle on both sides, the pass rush against the offensive line, because the Eagles still have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Dallas has probably the best pass rush in the NFL. Then on the other side, Dallas's offensive line has actually been doing a really good job this year. They're top 10 in terms of uh, pass blocking efficiency. I think they're even better than that in terms of just total pressures allowed. Yeah, they're third in total pressures allowed. Actually, t- yeah, tied for third. Um, and Philadelphia's pass rush, as we said, has not been as dominant as it has been previously. So those two things put together kind of suggest, again, that the edge actually goes to Dallas, who have the better pass rush and as good a pass-blocking group on the offensive line. Now, the one caveat to that is, at the moment, there's sort of one fairly significant the weak point of the Dallas offensive line this year has been Terrence Steele coming off that injury right at right tackle. So he has a pass blocking grade of 45.8. He's given up a couple of sacks. He's given up some pressure. He's given up some penalties. The Eagles still do have the athletes and the speed and the, the capacity to cause problems. You know, Josh Sweat had seven pressures last week. Hassan Reddick, as we said, his performance is down, but he's still a devastating athlete, a small, quick, fast guy. If they can specifically target Terrence Steele or attack him in such a way that Dallas knows they're going to have to give him a ton of help over the course of the game, you know, that could offset the fact that overall Dallas's offensive line should be able to handle what the Eagles are bringing. Yeah, it's, it's great matchups on both sides of the ball. Um, the other thing I want to with, – with Dallas's offense last week was C.D. Lamb, high-volume game, moving him around, and I, I think that's the way the Cowboys have to play. And if, if the Eagles take him away – you need the Brandon Cooks and Jake Ferguson's of the world to, to step up. Uh, and they, you know, they have a little bit more these last couple weeks. Uh, to be fair, as I, you know, if I'm going to do the home road splits for other teams, got to mm-hmm. do that for Dallas as well. Okay. Averaging 37 points a game at home, 21 and a half on the road. Hmm. That's quite a split. It's a big split. Maybe I'm rethinking things. Maybe I'm going to rethink things. I like Philadelphia the way, here. I like the way every year, you know, we, like a couple of years ago it was who's traveling the furthest. Yeah. And now it's just who's playing at home. I've I've done home road before. I've you know I've thought about that in the past. Mm. We need uh, to come. I mean, you need to you need to turn your modeling skills right from the model, the draft projection model, to let's throw in the important things that matter. Forget who the players are or the scheme. We need who is playing at home and doesn't have to travel 3,000 miles. miles. Yeah. yeah, like those two or three things, whether you're playing at home, whether you're, how far is your trip that you're making, throw all those in a hopper and uh, come up with an unbeatable pick model. Uh, one of the other off-season discussions during the off-season when you are you know, ranking things, the uh, you know, Jalen Hurts played better than Dak Prescott last year, graded higher PFF-wise. Uh, some people would say, Jalen Hurts is definitely better than Dak Prescott. Other people would obviously disagree. Well, right now, they're sitting at 9 and 10 in PFF QB rankings. Dak Prescott, 9. Jalen Hurts, 10 hmm. in the QB rankings. So there's a battle there. They're both playing pretty well. They're both, I mean, I feel like they're both guys that are that top 8-ish type of QB that fluctuates a little bit. You're going to be able to win with them. But I also like the way Hurts has been getting the ball down the field to A.J. Brown, who's been unstoppable. Oh, man, this is a great bat- great matchup. So I talk myself the other way. It's Where pretty, are you going? It's pretty impressive, one? actually. 78.1 versus 78.3 in PFF passing grade. Like, yeah. they're basically exactly the same at yeah. this point in the season. Um, I am going to lean with the Eagles until Dallas show me that they can beat the Eagles. Without Gardner Minshew. Yes, defense. without, you know, with yeah. starters. Man, I'm going, shoot. But there was Cooper Rush in Philly last year, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's backups. All bets are off. Like, show me the starters doing it, and then I'll get interested. I talked myself into Philly, too. I let the home road split get in get in there. <laughs> You're all set to go Dallas until you realize it wasn't yeah, in I'll Dallas. I'll take Dallas at, in, when they're at home. <laughs> Almost certainly. Depending on what happens between now and then. Yeah. 